Welcome to this post lunch session of Contributor to Conference Day 2 of WordCamp Asia 2024. I hope you are enjoying the event so far. So, before I call our next speaker, let's do a quick check in. How many of you have been, have got a chance to be on this stage? Like speaking at WordCamp, meetups, or anything like that? Please raise your hands. So that's a quite a good number. And so how many of you haven't got a chance or haven't ever applied? Might be some due to some fear or anything like that. Or you're still thinking that I should speak someday. Yeah. So, so be ready for this session. You can recognize from the topic also already. So in this session, you will learn how to deal with the fear of public speaking and come to this side of this hall because everybody wants to come to this side. So you will learn this, you will figure out the common mistakes that many of us do when we get a chance to do the public speaking. You will also learn that what to do and what to do, not what not to do when you get the chance to be on this stage. So I think that's enough about the talk. I don't want to reveal most of the things. So let's talk about our speaker. Usually he doesn't like to be introduced on the stage because he believes that you, are, you all are here not to know about him but to know about the t message uh, and the topic that he is going to deliver. But still it's my duty to introduce him. So he started his blogging journey in 2009 and then jumped into the WordPress plugin business in 2011. He is a founder of plugin and SaaS business. He sees WordCamp as an opportunity to meet and exchange ideas with the people. And with over 30 years of experience in the public speaking, he is an unusual combination of geek, entrepreneur, storyteller, and mentor. He is also one of my mentors for public speaking. <laughs> so let's please welcome Mr. Nirav Mehta on the stage to start the public speaking masterclass. Please welcome Philo Claps. All right. Welcome. I know it's a siesta session. For anybody who doesn't know siesta session, that means it's post-lunch and usually people prefer to sleep. Especially, especially if it's dark. <laughs> At the same time, you're here. And that tells me a couple of things about you. One is that you're curious about public speaking. You want to learn something. And second is that you're also committed to it. You may be an introvert, but you're committed to make a difference in your public speaking. So I promise you that you will learn a lot of things about effective public speaking today. Uh, like Anand mentioned, we will cover the classic mistakes the golden rule of goofing up and I'll also tell you about how you can turn any dry topic into an engaging session. But before we do all that, I think we need to go back like 30 years. So let's just rewind and go back 30 years. Imagine that there is a big auditorium, much bigger than this. It's a Friday morning a hot Friday morning, and I'm sitting right in that end corner somewhere. On stage is a charismatic lady, and she is teaching us public speaking. And I'm listening, like really glued in. In that session, I learned, the first lesson that I learned was about how to tackle anxiety. See, all of us, have butterflies. Whenever you go or have to go speak about something, you will feel the anxiety. And how do you deal with anxiety? Simple. What you do is, you may want to try that now. At least I feel comfortable. 
when you take deep breaths, you will center yourself and that will instantly calm down your nerves. And that's the most effective technique of dealing with any kind of anxiety that I've learned over the years. Now, that was my first big lesson from that lady. And the other lesson that I learned from her about public speaking was also equally effective. So let me demonstrate that. Imagine if you're in a big hall and you're talking to so many people. Public speaking is about talking to people, right? It's, it's not really about presentation, etc. It's about talking to people. And you can't talk to people if you are not connected to people. So how do you connect to people? Well, the only way to connect to people is through eye contact. Now, okay, if you're talking to one person, maintaining eye contact is easy. You just look into their eyes. But what if you have like 50 people, 500 people, 5,000 people? Then how do you maintain eye contact? And the trick to do that is also not very difficult. And here's how you do it. You look in one direction. Okay? Soft gaze. You're not looking into any particular person's eye. You're just looking into that direction. And you deliver one sentence. And then you move, you turn, and you look into the next angle, next direction. Look in that direction in a soft gaze and deliver one sentence. Turn, deliver the next sentence. Turn, deliver the next sentence. What happens when you do a soft gaze is that everybody in that direction will feel like you're looking at them. And when you're looking at people and they feel that you're looking at them, do you think they have any other option? They don't have any option. They have to look back at you and they have to kind of pay attention to you. That's how it works. When you do that, you instantly pull people in. Because you're just looking at everybody, talking to everybody. Now, over the years, I turned this into uh, a very fine principle and I call that my uh, 1.1.1.1 principle. Uh, I'll tell you about that and if I forget, remind me to talk about this. Okay? But for now, we have to continue in our flashback. Okay? So let's go back again 30 years. Now, I have used this technique about public speaking in a lot of elocution competitions, but now I have a bigger challenge. What's the challenge? So this time, it's the nation's Independence Day. And it's not an elocution, but this time it's a singing competition. Now, I like music, but I'm not a singer. But I still gather up courage and I go up stage and I'm like, okay, let's try something this time, you know, let's try something new. So I go up on stage. And this is 32 years ago, okay, exactly. And Jahan dal, jahan dal dal pe. As you can guess, it's a disaster. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the worst public humiliation I ever got. And somehow, somehow, I managed to complete the song. I don't want to complete the song here. You really want me to do it? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> so somehow I managed to complete the song and what I expected was that the audience will burst into laughter just like you did. But that didn't happen. The audience actually burst into an applause. And at that time, I learned the next biggest lesson in public speaking. Your audience wants you to succeed. See, they've taken that time out from their life and they're here. And they're here for you. 
they are here for themselves also but then they want to listen to you and they want to cheer you up so if you make any mistakes they are not going to throw rotten tomatoes to you did you guys bring any rotten tomatoes see so you know the, the whole thing is that we are so afraid of going on stage Remember that the audience is always on your side. They're not against you. They are with you. They are with you in this conversation that you're having with them. Make sense? Yeah. So let's jump back into the future now. And let's hope this works. Yes. So now let's get started. And uh, let me tell you what we're going to do today. Okay. So my name is Neera Mehta and I'm a successful entrepreneur, WordPress community member. We are official WooCommerce third-party developers. I have a portfolio of 30 products, more than 600,000 users. I have 30 years of experience in speaking in public and, uh, you know, I'm not fond of cats, but <laughs> cat pictures are cute. And that is going to be our agenda for today. Easy? Yeah? Shall we do that? Yep. Please don't do this. Please, please do not ever do this. Classic mistakes. It's full of classic mistakes. What are the mistakes? First, people are here not for you. They are here for themselves. They want to learn. They don't care about who you are, what your organization is, what are, cred what are your credentials. If you've got it, demonstrate it. You don't need to shout about it. Many people come on stage to gain some value. This is not a stage to gain value for yourself. This is a place where you give. Okay, so don't come on stage to gain value for yourself, gain some, you know, whatever, reputation or whatnot. If you're going to talk about something that people can search online, let them search online. Don't talk about it. If you're going to fill up your slides with so much information, people will just read the slides. Why should they listen to you? Yeah. Um, so there are lots of classic mistakes here. Uh, we will see if we get, you know, I'll talk about some more. But then you definitely do not want to do something like this. Can you promise me to not do something like this? Yeah? Thank you. So now let's, you know, get into something. Before we can even start talking about, you know, how to speak and what to do and what not to do, we need to address this fundamental question first. Why did you not apply to speak? Maybe some of you did, but most of you did not. And you would have lots of reasons. Those would be valid too, but you will have reasons like, oh, ha, you know, I don't know enough. There are so many people who are smarter than me in the audience. How do I speak to them? If I go up and speak, and if I make a fool of myself, then people will laugh at me. Or, oh, people will stare at me. You know, I don't like that. I don't like that attention. We all have lots of these reasons for not even trying. And I want to point out one thing to you. Most of the reasons that you have for not applying, okay, and hear this, are simply your concerns with your own self-image. You're worried about your self-image and that is the reason why you did not apply. That's a silly reason, no? I mean, yeah, it feels important, but it's really not that important. Because why? The audience is on your side. So, once that is out, let's deal with this. The elephant in the room, the fear. The fear of public humiliation, the fear of failure, the fear of looking like a fool. 
All that fear is unreal. It feels real, but it's all in your head. All the fear that you have, most of the fear at least, most of the fear that we have, whether in public speaking or in life, it's all some narrative, some story that we have in our head that we keep telling ourselves again and again and again. And then you start believing that story. And then we limit ourselves, we limit our progress. Public speaking is just one of them. But most of the fear is unreal. Now, once you've dealt with your fear and you've gathered the courage, because courage is something that lets you go beyond the fear. That's all. You will continue having fears. I still do. So if I'm coming up here, I will have a lot of anxiety. What do I do? Stay there or walk up? Walk up. That is courage. You will have fears, but when you keep your fears with you and you take the next action, that is courage. So be courageous. That's what it is about. All right, so I'm assuming that you are now considering talking at a word camp or some other place. And that's the next question that I want to ask. What's the purpose? Why do you want to even talk? And it's important because we need to stay focused on the purpose of the talk. I already told you that the purpose of the talk is to give and not to gain. But I like to kind of put it in these three segments. You have some idea that you want to inform or educate people about. That's your first goal. But you don't want to do that in a boring, dry way, right? Because people have seen and heard so many dry, boring sessions, they don't want another one. So you want to do that in a more engaging way. And after all this engagement and information is done, the real purpose is that you want them to act on something. Because, you know, what's the point of talking, blabbering, if there is no action? So this is what you really want to focus on whenever you're considering talking about something. Stay in the intersection of all these three circles. You want to inform, you want to educate, you want to entertain, and you want them to take action. Now, all that is clear. And you're starting thinking, Okay, now I want to apply and I want to do all these three things. But um, what is it that I talk about? Tough one. Okay, so let's try to kind of see that from different perspectives. Think about and ask yourself these questions. What is it that people come to me for advice? What are some projects that I'm really proud of? What is some idea, some insight that I have that needs to be shared with the world? Or this is the audience and what will make a difference to that audience? That is what you want to talk about. And what I do, I maintain a list of all the topics that I can talk about. And then I write a summary of it. And the summary is more like an ad, it's like a pitch. And then I will talk about these summaries to some friends and then I'll, you know, pass through them. They'll say, okay, this makes sense. And then I'll keep them. Over a period of time, I will have a few such, you know, list of topics that I can pull from any time. And that's what I do. You can also try to do that. Uh, and, you know, once you do that, then you really want to focus on this thing because your topic is likely going to be a tech topic. And tech topics are usually dry. I mean, you know, if I was to talk about something like Gutenberg, <laughs> it would get dry. Uh, I mean, I love it, but still. So how do you turn any dry technical topic into an interesting, engaging conversation? Well, the answer is stories. People love stories. We've all grown up with stories. And what you do is you take your experiences and turn them into stories. Remember I told you about my public speaking session, like the training that I had and my, you know, singing competition? What was that? 
So take your experiences that, you know, the experiences, the authentic experiences of failure, frustration, disasters that happen to you or people close to you are the best stories. Because they will connect with your audience. You know, when you, when you share your authentic stories, the audience will convert from plain vanilla interest to deep engagement. And that's what you want to do. Turn, take all your experiences, turn them into stories. Now, but when you do stories, you also want to be careful. You don't want to talk about so many stories because you may have so much experience. And then we learn something from movies. Movies have ups and downs. They have some suspense. They have some characters. So observe from the movies and see how you can make your story more emotional. Because emotions will always win over arguments. I guess most of you have experienced that at home. So you, you want to focus more on emotions and then the logical flow will continue. People will buy into your logic once they are connected with you emotionally. That's how you do stories. Now let's talk about slides. I think let's not talk about slides. Simple slides, just one word, no pictures, no cats either. Um, and just use the slides as a reference for yourself. The slides are not to be read either by the audience or by you. The slides are only your cues of what to talk about. Now, you may ask, okay, that's good, but you know, uh, how about like some nice AI generated images in the backdrop? Yes, they look cool. Yeah, if, if you like them, you can keep them, but is it going to add value to the audience? If you think it will, then do it. If not, why take the hassle? I mean, I try to keep things minimal. And you know why? I already told you that if you have a lot of text on the slides, people will read the slides, right? And if you don't have anything on the slide, if I have blank slides, what will you guys do? Ah, oh, you have no option again. <laughs> See, that's the reason why you don't want to keep too many things in the slides. And, you know, if you keep too many things in the slide, there is another risk. What if you forget? Then people will catch you. You forgot talking about this thing. Another benefit of keeping less things on the slide is when the timekeeper tells you that you're just out of time. And what you can do is quickly skip, skip, skip. Because there is nothing much on the slides and you can skip the slides. People don't even know what you're going to talk about anyway. Yeah, and that's what works for me. I hope it works for you also. So let's move on to the next slide, which is about code and demos. So if you have code and demos, then how do you handle it? If you have a demo, just record a video and show the video. Don't rely on an internet connection. If you have code, just show the most important code and not the entire file. Focus on the only thing that's important. Show less to people, talk more. When, when we're talking about slides, that's the principle. Okay. That's done now. Stage presence. And uh, I, I love this um, metaphor because when you are on stage, first of all, when you are on stage, uh, you have three tools at your disposal. First is your slides. Next is your body. And the third thing that you have at your disposal is your voice. When you're on stage, you just don't want to be a monotonous mimicry artist reading some text. You can use your hands, you can use your body, but also you can use your voice. The tone, the pitch, the volume, the inflections, 
all of that in your voice will contribute to a much better experience for people. So use that well. It's not just the slides that you have. You have a whole lot of other things at your disposal. And if you do that, people will have a multimedia experience, so to say. Right? And that's what they'll come in the session for. Otherwise, they can you know, just look at your slides. As if, if you practice this technique, they will not get anything in the slides still. But so you're an artist on stage, and when you're doing all this artistry, you know, there are also some things that will go wrong, and then you may have to focus on this then, which is what I told you about. You had to remind me. 1.1.1.1. What is that about? When you're on stage, uh, this is the technique that I love to practice, and it goes like this. You stand in one spot and you deliver one entire idea from that spot. Yeah, so one spot, one idea. That's the first two ones. And then one direction, one sentence. That's the other two ones which we talked about earlier. When your idea is over, you move to another spot. One direction, one sentence, Next direction, the next sentence, and keep repeating like that. What this does is this breaks the monotony. If you know, many people make this mistake of you know hiding behind the podium. Many people don't do that anymore. But many people have this mistake. You know, they keep walking, and they're talking to whom? To the wall. <laughs> the the moment you lose eye contact with your audience, you're gone. But a lot of us make that mistake. The other mistake that a lot of us make is that they know that they need to make eye contact, but then they will speak one sentence and then they'll keep looking at everybody. They'll just keep on like scrolling. So that also doesn't work because, you know, if you do not stay in one direction for one complete sentence, you don't make that connection. So you don't want to run around on the stage unless you definitely want to do something like this, which is part of your script. Yeah. But focus on this principle and then I think a lot of things will go well. Filler words is another thing that I want to talk about, which is all the ums and ahas that we fall into. See, filler words are good. They make your um, talk more conversational. It feels personal because when we talk to a friend, we do use filler words. But especially when you're on stage, you want to reduce the use of filler words. The reason why we use filler words is because there's so much going on in our head and we're just trying to put things together. We fill the gaps with these ums and ahas and okays and yas. The way you deal with them, just replace them with Silence. Take a pause whenever you're still trying to, you know, fit your thoughts. There is another benefit to pause. Pause also breaks the monotony of talking. So every time I stop, you're hanging again, waiting for what is to come next, again raising your curiosity really works. It has worked today. So that's the way you deal with filler words. And I'm going to quickly talk about a few more of my secrets or tips to you know deal with public speaking. The next is before going on stage, what is it that I do? Uh, so before I even enter the hall, I will just look around. I'll actually you know see the venue. Where do I have to enter from? How will I be on the stage? Before I actually start, I will come on the stage and I'll look at the whole setup, light setup. Uh, we'll test the mic, we'll test the clicker, the slides, the proportion, the ratio of the slides, the colors, everything. We will make sure that it is all done well. You want to test all of this every time you go on stage. Because something or the other 
will go wrong. And you want to prepare for it. You don't want to just get on stage and then face that. Uh, so, and then when I'm on stage, the first thing that I do is I don't start talking, I just stand. I'll stand in the middle and I'll just be with people. Establish that connection and then start talking. Yeah? Okay. So that's some tips about uh, being on stage. Uh, but there are some more interesting, important things like this. We get too serious. Especially if you're on stage and you've done all that preparation and then you're like, okay, this needs to go well, this needs to go well, and then you forget to smile. And especially when you make a mistake, you're like, oh, what should you do when you make a mistake? Yeah, just smile. When you're on stage, have fun. At least you can have fun. And if you're not having fun, what's the point? Because if you're not having fun, the audience will not have fun, they'll not connect, etc., etc., right? So I have to remind myself of doing this. Sometimes I, you know, plant people in the audience. I tell them, okay, look at my expression. If I s seem so, if I look at like, look boring, then just indicate me that I have to smile and then I'll smile and then go forward. Yes? Quickly, let me complete some golden rule of goofing up. I promise you, I'll tell you that. The golden rule of goofing up, making mistakes, is that nobody will know about it. You wrote your script. You figured, like you planned what you want to talk about. You make a goof up. They don't even know. People don't know when you make mistakes. Like I would have made so many mistakes. I just made a mistake in this sentence itself. Nobody noticed. People won't notice because they don't know your script. That's a golden rule of goofing up. Feel free to goof up. But do not forget practice. Practice is important. I go to the length of writing the script for my entire talk. I like really writing the script and then practicing that and rehearsing that. I make mistakes, but it's okay. People are on my side. The difference between me to memorable is practice. The more you do it, the better you'll get it. Finally, remember, there is no inherent stress in public speaking or life in general. We make it stressful. You don't have to be perfect to succeed. You don't have to be a charismatic person to succeed at public speaking. What really matters is authentic stories that will connect people. When you share that authentically, people will get value. And that is what you want to focus on when you do public speaking. You want to focus on giving value to people. When people receive value, that is your success. Now, I told you that it's about inform, engage, and act. What is the action that I'm asking you of? Speak. Speak. And don't wait till the next word camp. Yeah? You don't have to wait till the next word camp to speak. You can just, you know, turn to the person sitting next to you, go outside and then share one thing that you liked in this session. Talk about 30 seconds. And that is public speaking because you're talking to somebody public. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you very much. That was an amazing masterclass in public speaking. And I think we have some time. We have? Okay. So can we have a quick question from the audience? Anyone want to ask something? Ah, so if you ask me a specific question, I'll try to answer it specifically. If you ask me a vague question, I'll try to confuse you more. <laughs>
What tips do you have for public speaking on like a Zoom call or online situation? So you won't have a stage, so you can't do all the acting. The rest will stay the same. Yeah, I get it that you don't see the audience, uh, but if you have the chance and if you have the setup, you can see the audience. Like you can have one screen for yourself and the rest if you can see the other attendees. If you can do that, still maintain that eye contact. But anytime you're talking to a camera, the best way to maintain eye contact or make other people feel like you'll have eye contact is to look into the camera and talk. Because when you look into the camera, people feel that you're talking to them. Yeah? On the other side. Thank you. Next question. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, first of all, your presentation is phenomenal, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, my question is, um, how is important about the speaker notes, including the script of, of, the, of your presentation when you speak publicly? And how do how often you read them? Okay, so his question is about speaker notes, and speaker notes are like notes that you can leave with each slide in most of the uh, you know presentation software. I keep my script as a as a speaker note. So with each slide, I write a whole script about what I'm going to talk about. I don't submit that to the organizers though. I keep it to myself, and I don't read them. Okay, so I would not read from the speaker notes. So depending on the setup where you're going to talk, uh, so some of them will have this kind of a monitor, okay? So if this monitor uh, may have your speaker notes, and if you have speaker notes, and sometimes it has the next slide that you're going to you know, present. So if you have that, you can use that as a reference. Today I didn't have that because I submitted a PDF. I don't prefer to submit a keynote or PPT. I prefer to submit PDF to avoid all the risk of things not working. So. I won't have speaker notes at my disposal when I'm speaking, so I can't read them. Because if I read them, what's going to happen? If I read, then what's going to happen? Yes, you guys are smart. You will lose eye contact. You lose eye contact, you lose the audience. Yeah, make sense? Thank you. Thank yeah. you for your sharing experience. It's so great. And you say that we need to action, so I decide to ask question. It's also public speaking. Yes, <laughs> yes, me. yes. I feel so nervous just thinking about asking questions. So I can imagine how stressful to be on the stage. And you said last thing about practicing. So I'm curious about like, what opportunity can we have to practice? You said that we, we can just find the people to talk to them, yes. but it's so much easier to just talk to person, just two of us, it's, there's no stress to talk about. It's so much different compared to stand on the stage. Yeah. So where can I practice? I like if I practice at home, yeah. I won't feel stress. So where can I have the like uh, similar environment to feel that? Thank you. Good question. So first of all, I would like to uh, answer the second part, which is about stress, and that you know we may not have stress with a friend or at home. Stress is here. So you just tell yourself that this friend is actually 1,000 people, or this mirror that you're talking to is a big auditorium. Okay, so just imagine that you're speaking in front of a big audience. I bet you will be stressed. Okay. Now, uh, that's just one way of dealing with that. So if you do mirror work, which is like practicing in front of the mirror, or you can record yourself on camera. By the way, that's a fun thing to do. Like really. When, and when you do that, don't have anybody else in the room and don't show that video to anybody else. Okay, because you will laugh so much looking at yourself on camera. But that's another way to practice. And of course, Whenever you have an opportunity, speak in a meetup. Uh, if you have an organization, speak in front of people in your team. If you have a group of friends, uh, speak in front of them for any topic that is of common interest. You don't need to talk about WordPress. You can talk about anything. And see, the trick is every time you talk in public, if you be conscious about it, and if you practice some of these principles, 
you'll get better at it. So if you practice, let's say, eye contact. If you practice, if you have a few people, then if you practice one sentence, one direction, yeah, you will get better at it. And that is what will come useful when you come on stage. It's just a matter of time. Yeah. So I look forward to see you on stage. So just one quick question again. Yeah. Yeah, yeah one question. So how much of... How do you make adjustments to your presentation? Let's say, depending on your audience, where you're at, you know, you may make slight adjustments, right? Yeah. What if you don't know that much about your audience and you don't get to ask them questions? I, I mean, some, like certain comedians with their punchlines may work at certain cities but not other cities. And the same thing with a tech audience versus an audience that you may not have yeah. that much info about. So how do you determine optimal impact based on the, the type of adjustments you can make in real time? Yeah. Again, great question. So you have to listen to all kind of feedback that you'll get from the audience. When I walk up stage and look at you, and if you look back at me, there is some feedback. If I try to crack a joke, and if you laugh at it, there is some feedback. If you don't laugh at it, that's another feedback. And that is how you could adjust. Or you can also ask questions. If it's a technical topic, you can always ask questions like, okay, how many of you have done this, not done this, etc., to what level? So those are the things that you can do. And another thing that helps is you have to be good at what you're talking about. And once you're good at what you're talking about, you will know that, okay, if my audience is like these, these are the adjustments that I can make. Or you can pre-plan that, okay, if people know about this or if this is the city or this is the kind of you know, context that I'm going to talk about, then this is the branch of my presentation that I'll use. And you know, if you have multiple slides, you can skip a few or you can say spend more time on this slide and not on that slide, things like that. So you can always vary your delivery, even if it's on the same topic based on the audience. It's important to do that because that's what matters. You're here to give value to the audience. If they don't receive value, what's the point? Yeah, so it, it is dynamic, but I would say uh, get feedback in whichever view, uh, way possible so that you know whether the audience is connecting with you or not. Then carry forward. Thank you. Any one last question I think we can take? Okay, so one here. Oh, so we are out of time, so we, we can take the question after, after the, sure. and you, you can catch him outside also, and yes. he will be also available at the after party. Yep. And we have a special token of appreciation for our speaker, so just let me give. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, and I hope some of you will try to act on this. Uh, we will be back. We will be back shortly after for the next session. So stay here, uh, and if you want to take water or anything, you can come back soon. <laughs> <laughs>